Hi, this is Katina, and we are here today for our Ask a Clarinet Teacher, and we are going to talk about playing in the altissimo range of our instrument. Oh, my hair is going to bother me. Um, so, one of the things that is hard for people is once you get to this C, which is hard to get to in its own right, is getting up into this altissimo range. So this was actually a question from one of my viewers, uh, how to play the chromatic scale to that top part of the range. Hello, I am actually going to fix my hair because it is driving me crazy. So we are going to go over that and I'm going to go over it chromatically, but I'm going to give you a couple exercises on how to get there first. As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat bar so that I can see them and I will go over them as well. So, oh, hi Tyler and hi Enclave. So we are gonna start here at an E. So I'm assuming you can play over the break. So your thumb down in your register, one, two, three, one, two for E right here. And then in order to get to that C sharp, I'm gonna have you just roll this finger off of the top right there and that's how the, we practice getting up into the altissimo range unfortunately and this is just a clarinet thing um not all band directors play the clarinet nor do they get to learn these little details that we know as clarinet players but a lot of them have you start here to get to that c sharp and that's kind of hard to do for voicing so we're going to start at the e and then we're going to roll this top finger off here because the C sharp is the is the um, the twelfth higher than the E, and the clarinet is built on twelfths, not octaves. Um, hi, oh my gosh, I have to put my glasses on to read everything, but then if I have them on for the video, you just see the light in them. Um, so, Caitlin, hello. I was going to say Cecilia, so I need those glasses. All right, so starting on that E, I'm going to show you this roll technique to get to the C sharp. <laughs> grunt in there so I'm gonna blow, blow more air through it to get that grunt out of there um, I was backing off on my air because my clarinet was right by my phone which is what I'm doing this live stream on and I didn't want to hurt your ears but you need that air and you need that that push and the support with your abdominal muscles to get those high notes to speak once you're able to get to that E that C sharp comfortably you have a couple of options articulate that C sharp and then try just start starting on the C sharp directly and the C sharp is actually quite a resistant note so if you're able to start on that C sharp after you practice getting up there a couple times you can start chromatically moving up to that high G sorry no grunt Now starting on the C sharp. Um, so to get those notes to speak, let's talk a little bit about tongue position as well. I have my tongue up in the back like I'm saying ew. So I'm pulling everything forward with that ooh feeling, but the tongue, tongue is up in the back in that E position. So everybody's mouth is different, everybody's mouthpiece is different, everybody's read is different, right? So experiment to stabilize them even more, continue that 12th exercise. So we had started on the E and we rolled to the C sharp. Let's start on the F and roll to the high D. Once again, that grunt to me is not acceptable, so I'm gonna do that again. No. And then when you get that good one, practice that good one over and over again. That's one of the practicing pitfalls. So I don't like to say practice makes perfect because it doesn't, especially if you're practicing poorly. So perfect practice makes perfect, but even then nobody's perfect. So if you get um, a lot of bad ones in a row to get the good one, right? Let's say you it takes 10 times to get a good interval there. Well, you've practiced it poorly nine times, right? So once you get the good one, then you want to repeat the good one a lot of times. I usually do a factor of three. So if it's taken me like six or seven times to get to a good one, 
I'm looking at 18 or 21 good, uh, you know, 21 repeats of the good one. Now that's also very, very difficult to do. So I try and put a lot of my practicing away from the clarinet and more about thinking and analyzing. So instead of just randomly doing it over and over again until I get it correctly, I want to figure out what went wrong. So when I was playing that high D before and I got that grunt in there, I have to take a moment to stop and go, okay, all right, first of all, I heard it. So that's step number one. And then step number two is why? Am I supporting enough? Is my air moving quickly enough? Do I have a good embouchure? Where's my tongue position? All those things go into play here. And then the last thing I want to address with playing high is just make sure you have a reed that's the correct strength for that. A lot of us, when we're starting out in band in school, they give us these just terrifically soft reeds, like a two, it's just horrific. Um, move up to a two and a half if you can. Um, and then if you're trying to get the high notes out and they aren't speaking, experiment with a little bit harder of a reed strength to see if you can get them to work better there because they usually do. And then if the reed strength is still too hard for you, it's too difficult to play or you're sounding kind of stuffy, go back down to that other reed strength that you liked before and see if you can recreate that feeling that you were getting in your voicing to get those altissimo notes to speak for you. So um, another one to point out with reeds is a lot of times we play these reeds to death. You know, we, they wear out really, really quickly. So check on your reed too to make sure you didn't wear it out. Okay, I'm gonna look at some of the questions I've been getting. Um, okay, Enclave, I struggle with playing the high note. What can I do to make it easier? Okay, what is the easiest way to play E flat? So I did the C sharp right here and then the D and then the, the E flat right here. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm assuming you're talking about the altissimo range. So go back to that warm up if you weren't here in the beginning, but I think you were. If you can play this E, all you have to do is roll that finger off to get to that C sharp, but I'm still supporting here. I'm pushing out with my abdominal muscles to get that to work. with the sliver key right here. So that one I'd wanna practice a bunch to find that sweet spot of where I can get that interval to have um, a smooth connection without any grunts or spaces in there. I actually think I'm gonna make the Altissimo warm up my warm up this week. I um, clearly am out of shape up there. Um, then another way to get to the E flat would be to start on that C sharp if you can. So some fingering charts have you doing C sharp, D, and then E flat, which is a horrible, horrible, horrible fingering. Don't use it. It's also much easier to use this liver key, which is also a better sounding, more stable E flat. Um, so just do the warm up where you start down the 12th below and roll your top finger up so that off so that you can get up to those. And then once you get to the C sharp, just work up slowly by half steps. And let's say you hit that wall, right? And it's not working go back to the ones that do work. It takes a lot of air to get these high notes out. Play them really, really loud. I'm really sorry for your dog. I am really sorry for your family because we are all quarantined in our houses and you're gonna be playing altissimo notes and they're all gonna hate you. So also just be, be kind in that department. Do not do it at three o'clock in the morning. Um, but use a lot of air and then as you get those notes out, you can scale it back so that you can work on your sound and getting them to sound beautiful. Um, okay. Uh, next, do I have any fingerings for quarter tones? Ooh, microtones, um, like E flat flat. Um, that is an amazingly good question. Thank you so much. Udi, um, that's a good one. I'm gonna bump you over to Jason Alder. I bumped somebody else over to him a couple weeks ago for slap tonguing. Um, I don't use a lot of quarter tones. Um, and he, I believe, has an excellent fingering chart for it. If um, he doesn't have it for B flat, I know he will have it for bass, he can point you in the right direct direction for finding somebody that does the quarter tones for bass that will answer your questions. I know um, David Krakauer uses them a lot too, um, but I don't know how frequently he gets to answer people's questions. So check out Jason Alder, that's A-L-D-E-R. He's very active on social media and um, you probably could instant message him 
on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Instagram might be the best one. And he's also on YouTube. So go ask him your quarter tone question. It's excellent. Um, moving on. Sorry, I can't answer that one. Um, okay. Do you know any fingerings for court? Nope, I already did that one. A size three. It's size three read if you're trying to get into the altissimo range and they're still not speaking for you and you're doing all the other ones with support and blowing a lot of air. Um, try a three and a half. See if it works. Do a couple experiments for you um, to see. Also, um, if you're using a stock mouthpiece, those are high, harder to play the altissimo notes on those. So um, you may want to consider upgrading your mouthpiece if it's a stock one that just came with your clarinet. Um... Uh, Udi, you play Arabic music, which employs microtonal scales organically, and I'm a novice at the clarinet. It would be cool to learn microtone fingerings on clarinet. That is such a good question, and Arabic music is amazing. Um, I'm having a woman come to, um, I do a summer music festival or summer cl clarinet camp at George Mason University that's in Fairfax, Virginia, but this year because we can't do it in person, we're doing it online, and we have a woman coming, and she's doing Albanian clarinet playing, um, and that's a great question for her about the microtonal uh, music. We're so caught up in this Western music. It's like colonization never stopped. Anyway, um, so yes, check out Jason Alder to see if he can help you. He can definitely point you in the right direction, and if you're not on, if you aren't, if, let me start over. If you're on Facebook, there's a group called the Clarinetist Channel, I believe. Um, if you join that group, you can ask your question there, and there'll be more people there that can answer it as well. Um, okay. Um, you are welcome. Do you have any recommendations for marching band? Um, can you tell me more about marching band recommendations, like ones to watch or how to play in marching band? Or So be a little more specific with that question. Uh, don't do it. Clayton says don't do it at 3 in the morning. 4 a.m. for me. It is 4 a.m. for you now. Oh my gosh. Thank you for coming so early in the morning. I don't know about you guys, but I have not been able to sleep and I have had to stop reading the news because then I can't sleep and then because I can't sleep I read the news and then I'm up. So I, <laughs> um, sleeping has been hard for me recently. Uh, but thank you for coming so early in the morning. Okay. Um, uh, Clayton, I sent you to Jason Alder already. Um, wait, no, I said somebody else. Oh, Clayton, I did. You were the slap tonguing one. Yeah, yeah, no, and he was really nice, right? Really responsive. Yeah, he's a great guy. His hair is amazing. Um, okay, uh, so Jason Alder, yeah, you got it. That's how you spell it. Um, yep, so <laughs> that's awesome, Clayton. Um, Alder, <laughs> I like how um, it got autocorrect to Alser um, there as well. Um, yeah, he's great. Um, one of these days we should just figure out how to do a joint, um, ask a clarinet teacher because he would, uh, it would be fun to do two of us, the, the two of us at the same time. I believe he's in London right now, but he's from Michigan or something. Um, so I have time for just a couple more questions. I have to sign off a little bit early today. Um, for those of you that have seen my kitten on some of my other um, live streams or videos, the one with one eye, she now is having trouble walking. So I have to get her to the vet. So hopefully she'll be okay. Um, maybe it was all those altissimo notes I was practicing. Maybe I broke her. Um, but, um, oh, how to play in marching band. Oh, honey, where do I even start? Um, I don't know if any of you on here know me in real life, but you're about to know I'm about to go on my marching band rant. I love marching band. Marching band is so much fun. It is so much fun to be with all, all well, when I did it, to be with my friends and to take the bus trips to the cavalcades. I don't care about football, but I really like the terrible hot chocolate that I would drink in the stands and spill on my white gloves. So marching band was the best for social reasons. It is the worst for clarinet playing. It is absolutely hands down a terrible um, way to play the clarinet because we can never play loud enough for them, right? And so if we were to play with the volume that they want us to in a concert hall, everybody would just pass out from the pain of listening to that. And so we spend all this time as clarinetists trying to refine our sound, getting beautiful sounds and controlling this beast of an instrument, right? It's even worse if it's an E flat clarinet. And now 
That is a caveat because that's also the Western style of clarinet playing too. Of course we don't want to sound bad, but we have this very specific style that we're all trying to get, which is this sort of dark style. And marching band, we just can't get um, projection or volume that way. So they're going to yell at you all the time to play louder. Just just do your best um, and, and try and keep your good embouchure and try and keep your good mouth position. These are all hard things to do. Um, so equipment wise, you're going to use a plastic clarinet. You're not going to use a wooden clarinet outside. It'll be destroyed. Um, beware that certain um, plastic clarinets will actually react to bug spray and sunscreen. So I've had students those clarinets have um, melted because they've rested them on their arms in parade rest and then they put them out in the sun and it starts to decay the um, the the plastic it's not plastic it they don't call it plastic they have another name for it which i'm blanking on right now so you're going to want to use your plastic clarinet um don't use your best best mouthpiece go ahead and use that stock mouthpiece because some it's going to get damaged somebody's going to drop something somebody's going to step on it um you're going to drop it off a bleacher so you do not want to use good equipment for it um also you may want to consider leger reed the, those um synthetic reeds now are wonderful they are really really durable they last a very very long time um and you'll be able to get more volume out of a reed like that um, and it'll last you a whole marching season, whereas the poor cane reeds, they warp, they split, they chip, they just can't handle it. Um, yes, marching band, just be aware that you'll never be able to give them what they want. They want so much more clarinet sound, and you just can't do it. It's just the way the world works outside there with clarinets. Um, I spend a good two or three months reconditioning my students after marching band season, for I'm sure. So go have a great time. <laughs> This is assuming we all get to go back to school the way that we wanted to before all this mess happened. But let's just assume that, you know, people watch this video in the future and Marching Band is back. Um, do it for the do it for the fun. And also do it for memorizing music, which is fantastic, and do it for um, body awareness with rhythm because that's also amazing. Uh, marching is really, really good for keeping a rhythmic pulse. Good question. Yeah, I wish I wish we played the trumpet because then I'd be like, it's the greatest. We get all the solos. Everybody can hear us. But no, <laughs> no, not for clarinet. Um, marching band four years, the best four years of your. I loved marching band. I really, really had a great time. Um, and I'm sorry, you know, if I were to do it again, I would do drumline. I would go back and play the quads. They're amazing. Um, so. Um, yeah, Marching Band is the best. I know, thank you about my kitty. Her name is Kiki. I'm so worried, and I, I think she'll be okay, but um, I'll keep you guys updated. Um, just blast every practice, Clayton. Oh, yeah. Um, when the gimmicks come in, 90... Yeah, oh, so, yeah, then they do, when they... I'm sorry, I have to laugh, but when they do the horns up for us, right? You know, trumpets, it looks fantastic. It's like the trumpet goes straight up, it looks great, the sound's going out, the bell, everything's beautiful the light hits the brass and it's like Meh. and then for us it's just like <laughs> it's not quite it's not quite the same it is it is kind of comical but you gotta love it um so um i can never play loud enough for them no we can't i mean and if you do then it's like just at the edge of nastiness and squeaking and i'm really who wants that um my band dropped his reed in the field. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he dropped his reed in the field and you never saw it again. It probably, like, decomposed. Oh, and all the fields aren't grass anymore. They're all the astroturf, which smells so bad. So that kind of stinks. I didn't mind having the grass fields. Yes, you get really dirty. So I had white marching band shoes, so they were. All, I was always polishing, polishing those bad boys. And I had white marching band pants. So that kind of was problematic. They were stained green all around the bottom. But it, I hate the way the AstroTurf smells. Um, so uh, ask, me the, ask me the marching band one again next week. Just ask it every week. <laughs> It's my favorite. Um, okay, it sucks when marching band, when your fingertips get so cold you can barely play. Okay, so obviously we all have to, you know, we had to wear white gloves and we had to cut the fingertips out of the gloves so that we could play. And then it would get really hot. And my husband is in the Air Force band. So he's in the um, ceremonial brass. So he's out playing outside all year long. And 
they have these little things that they carry around their pockets that they sort of crack it and it heats up. It's like this little packet. So they have those to stay warm. And when he first joined the band, I was really worried about him outside in the cold because I thought that that was going to be dangerous. And it turns out that you can actually warm yourself up quite nicely. The, uh, he had to buy a special mouthpiece for his trumpet so his lips didn't freeze to his mouthpiece when he was playing um, taps. But it's the summertime. This is a real problem for them because, you know, they have to wear those dress uniforms and they're standing out there and it's 104 degrees in Arlington Cemetery. And so a lot of them, um, it, not a lot, but they occasionally fall out is what they call it. And so somebody will just pass out. And then I think they just remove that person and just carry on as if nothing happened. Um, but yeah, yeah, my fingers would get cold too. I was from Pennsylvania. Uh, also, my favorite memory was we would, before we would drive out to a cavalcade, we would hit the McDonald's. And those were the best Big Macs of my life, just sitting on the bus with all my friends, driving to Hershey Park. Anyway, um, so, okay, um, can I put which songs on a sheet? So somebody asked me for songs on a sheet. If it's the, the um, warm-up that I did with the, the Altissimo range, yes, I can do that. That's a good one. Um, after your marching band, my air is so much now. I'm beef player to contra list. Yeah, actually... Um, yeah, you, I do think I used more air when I was in marching band, um, but you have to use it differently. Like the, the problem with marching band is the overblowing, right? Because we were so desperate not to get yelled at by people that we tend to overblow. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, you know, there must be a correlation there too, because I played a lot of bass clarinet in the pit. So, um, and bass has more of that kind of feel to the air than B flat does. B flat, I feel like I have to craft it more in my mouth. Um, Silverstein is giving away synthetic reeds. Oh, that's great. Every If you have a link for that Tina clarinet, um, or if you can comment with that, that would be amazing to share that. Or just um, just look for Silverstein for the um, Silver Lining Project. That's wonderful. Are they doing that for the coronavirus? That's really nice. Um, Okay. Oh, Enclave, you only know three scales. I have lots of scale videos if you want to watch those. Um, but yeah, I, my advice for scales is just build on them. Build on them by, um, you can do it a couple of ways. Um, what I usually do with students is um, I have them learn all this, all 12 keys by one octave and then by two octaves and then if it's a third octave scale then do those separately and um, depending on the person and that's you know what I'm not here I am not you know I'm looking at a camera I'm not looking at you sitting across from me um, I would analyze how you learn and some people are kinesthetic learners which means they learn by feeling more than they learn by um, seeing or hearing, right? And so sometimes I've found that it's easier to learn a scale, not by the sharps or the flats in it necessarily, but by the fingerings themselves. So for instance, I like the way the pattern of the E scale feels when I do E, F sharp, G sharp. I love doing that with my pinkies. A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, D sharp, C sharp, B, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, right? And then what's great about once you learn that one octave, you've actually learned the second octave too, not exactly the same because we go up by a 12, but you've got E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. As long as you can do F sharp, G sharp, A, you're doing the same fingerings again. B, C sharp, D sharp, E. See what I mean? F sharp, G sharp, it only changes right there for the A. You don't have that side key down. But so I would just suggest doing the one octaves and just building from what you know. And if it's easier to build by flats or build by sharps, then, you know, learn the F scale, one flat. Learn the B flat scale, two flats, and just go from there. Um, okay, wow, we got a lot of highs from Radu Pop. Thank you. <laughs> um, scrolling back up. Hi, wow, you've said definitely a lot of highs. Um, B flat, E flat, and G. Um, when the band director treats ice cream because the effort you put in for marching band, only marching band. Oh, that's right. Um, ours would, um, ours would do the, ugh, ours would do the hot chocolate. Yeah. Um, God, do you guys miss your band director so much right now? I know they miss you. Um, I'm in these uh, private groups, chat groups on Facebook, and all the band directors are so bummed. 
um, because it's not the same as teaching another online class, you know? We're a family in bands and we're all together and having the band room as a place to go hang out at lunch or in between classes or during study hall, that is like a really special part of being in school. And then, um, so that's gone and it's gone for your band director too. And hopefully we can get our acts together by the fall and have some kind of vaccine and you know I'm a glass half full kind of person. Um, but I am a little worried about that for us. Maybe we'll all just be playing percussion for a year until we can get a vaccine and then we'll go back to the clarinet so we don't spit the coronavirus on each other. Um, okay, so that's your concert scale. So you know the C scale, the F scale, and the, ooh, the G, concert G, that's an A scale. That's an interesting one to know. Um, okay, let me see here. Um, Oh, I'm loving to see what people got from their band directors, um, popsicles. Geez, I was happy just to get water. Um, it's week four for you at Tina, Tina Clarinet. I swear to God, it's week eight for me. I have been on lockdown since March 12th, and it is suckity suck sucky. I hate it. Um, but, you know, it's good to keep people safe, and we're all doing the right thing. Um, trilling with pinkies is a pain for me. Oh, that's a hard one for me too. Um, trilling with pinkies is hard for me. Um, my pinkies will stiffen and lock up. So what I do with that one is I'll just practice. There's some great, um, Behrman exercises and closet exercises, but sometimes I'll just practice the... <laughs> Um, I started on the F, but I didn't like how it sounded, so I moved to the G sharp. So I will do it rhythmically. I'll just do quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, and then I'll do the sixteenth notes, and then I'll try and speed that up. So I'm actually kind of doing it rhythmically to build that control into the trill so it doesn't sound choppy and sloppy. Um, wow, I should definitely say that more often, choppy and sloppy. But um, it, it also helps build strength and control in that finger. Um, I also, um, Yehuda Galad had us doing, um, there are these, I don't have one with me, um, these guitar, it's for guitar players to strengthen their fingers, um, but the lightest one possible, and um, I've only been able to find the heavy strength and the medium strength, and you want the light strength, and you can just practice pressing those so that you can get some strength um, in your finger. But I've actually, you know, stress balls, I've had students just press a stress ball. You have to be very careful with your pinky because you can get a lot of stress and tendonitis in there. So, um, but you can work on it. Another thing you can do, this is another Yehuda Glad thing you had us do to lighten up your fingers is um, have us balance a ping pong ball in our hands um, without dropping it. So just sort of move it around a little bit without, you know, hitting it so hard it flies out of your hand. Um, but yeah, those trills, I would practice them rhythmically and then speed them up and just use a metronome to try and get them faster. Um, yeah, if Tina, if you can get us that link to the Silver Lining Project, that would be great. I'm going to wrap up now so I can go take Kiki to the vet. Um, but, um, you can put it in the comment sections. Thank you for, thank you very much for telling us about that. I should reach out to them too. I feel bad for my juniors. They trained for a competition for four months because of the virus. Oh, Clayton, seriously all the people that missed all state band and um solo ensemble in virginia i mean they pulled it they pulled the plug fast in virginia so we um we i think it was march 11th um the school district that i live in canceled school for two days then the governor canceled it for two weeks and i swear a week later he was we were done for the year so we've been done for a long time we know we've known and it um yeah I mean, I've, I've had students that have worked, I swear, it feels like they worked for seven years. They wanted to get, they wanted to go to Allstate from when they were in fourth and fifth grade, right? And they finally got in. And then they didn't get to go. It's so sad. Um, I'm so sorry and so sad for everybody. I wish there was a way we could have one great big music festival for everybody that missed their stuff, right? As soon as all this lifts, just all get together and play in a giant band. It would be amazing. Um... All right, I'm going to see what the last comments were. Um, sorry, it was for the Silver Sign Silver Lining Project. Um, yeah, teen. Oh, you've been working. <laughs> oh, you've been working. Yeah, it's the worst. Um, so, um, 
all right guys thank you so much i uh, i will see you next week um i also i'm going to be having um another live stream coming up i'm going to be unboxing uh, the Kuhn Alpha Clarinet. They're sending me one to try, so I'm going to unbox that. Um, I'll schedule that for whenever it arrives, so uh, keep an eye out for that, and um, just keep practicing, and stay healthy, and safe, and sane. Thank you. Bye.